church down there is Clear Springs Bible Church dot org. Uh, we're a Grace Church, and I've been there this 28 years, and we're thankful for Grace. We're thankful for Grace School of Bible, and Grace School of Bible. And I, 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 I pray for all, all the students and uh, all that's being done there. And I'm just uh, I stand amazed at what God d- is doing and what He will do. But our church, uh, we have a a yearly Bible conference the uh, last weekend in March. It's, it, you can go on our website, clearspringsbiblechurch.org. So with that, go ahead and turn to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1 today. And my topic is the gospel that isn't, is, that isn't in the gospels. And I, I'm thankful for the gospel that I know is not in the gospels. I'm thankful for grace, for salvation. But in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 11, Paul says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful today for this opportunity to be here. Thank you for all the saints. We just pray that whatever is said and done today will bring honor and glory to your name. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. You think about the gospel that, that isn't in the gospels. You think about the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus Christ is, is the center of it all. And if you leave Christ out, you've left it all out, and we all know that. And uh, we've got a, I've got a purpose here today as far as the purpose of the message is to demonstrate the uniqueness of Paul's message. And so many people fail to see the uniqueness of Paul's message. And also to clarify exactly the contents of the gospel of our salvation. And that's very important that we see all this. And you think about the word unique. The the gospel, Paul's message stands alone. I mean, it's unique. It stands alone by itself, and we know that. Reading Romans through Philemon, we understand that it stands alone. And also, belonging to or connected with only one particular thing place, or person. I read that out of the dictionary. And I thought about that. One particular belonging to or connected with only one particular thing, place, or person. So what I want to do to demonstrate the uniqueness of Paul's message, first of all, it's, it's unique because it pertains to one particular thing. And that one particular thing, as we know, is the mystery program. It's the body of Christ. It's in the but now time period that we're in today. That's how unique it is, one particular thing about that. And we understand by reading the Word of God that God interrupted the prophecy program. And by interrupting the prophecy program, Israel had rebelled and gone back on God and and ended up blaspheming the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 7. And they fall the fall of Israel in Acts 9. The Lord saved Saul on the road to Damascus and gives him the gospel, gives him the revelation. And so he interrupts, God interrupts the prophecy program with the mystery program. And that's Romans 16, 25. And you, you think about how unique the mystery program what, uh, is for us today. And time passed, looking at time passed, Israel was nigh to God. I mean, they were God's people. God chose them. And they were His people. They were nigh to Him. But they they didn't keep the commandments. They didn't keep the Word of God. They didn't live by faith. I mean, you name it, they didn't do it. And and because of that, you look at the Gentiles. In in reading Romans chapter 1, Paul says that God gave them up. God gave them over. And so the Gentiles, in Genesis 11, they messed up. And uh, so God chose Israel in in Genesis chapter 12 there. And with that, with that but, but now program, or time past program there with Israel, uh, Israel was God's choice people. But yet we see how things are interrupted because of sin and what sin does. And sin makes a difference. Sin makes a difference in people's lives and in a nation's life and all these type things. And you think about our country, uh, that we ought to stand on the Word of God. And a lot of times, many times, people don't stand by God's precious Word but time passed, uh, God gave up the Gentiles. And you look, at, you look at the but now, God's changed His dealings with man. You think about the Gentiles, they were the usurpers of authority. 
I mean, they had the power. They had the control because God, God gave them that power over the, over the Israel because Israel messed up. They sinned, rebelled against God. And with that, turn to Ephesians chapter 2 for just a minute. It's Ephesians chapter 2. And we'll read verse 13. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. Paul says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes are far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now that makes it pretty clear to us that, uh, but now you look in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes are far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I remember a few years ago when uh, I've, I've divided the Bible by dispensations for years before I learned, come to the knowledge of the truth and learned, it, learned what I needed. Uh, and I would read this chapter here and it didn't mean anything to me because I had it embedded in my mind. It's dispensations, dispensations. Well, there's dispensa- dispensations in time, but the Word of God speaks for itself. You've got to believe what you read. And a lot of folks uh, don't want to believe what they read. And when you read verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes are far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We were far off. It's, we're, it's but now. And you can read on down through there and read the chapter and see time pass, but now, and ages to come. And I didn't see that for a long time. And one day it dawned on me, hey, I, the Bible's right and you're wrong. I heard a tape on eternal glory. And by re- listening to every one of, one of the messages and taking my Bible and reading along with the messages, uh, I believe what the Word of God said. And when I believe what the Word of God said, the light came on. And I saw the difference, but it's time. Time passed, but now and ages to come. And yes, there is, there's dispensations, but also you divide it by time. And that's, that's very important for us. And you look at that there and you can see the but now, uh, there's a change. The power shifted. When, the, when the Israel blasphemed the Holy Ghost in Acts 7, they fall, start falling, diminishing down. The power shifted and it goes, uh, well, the Gentiles had already taken power over there with uh, Nebuchadnezzar and all that. But you think about the usurpers. You think about uh, Gentiles and the power, the, what they were in and what does God do? He saves a man named Saul and he, he gives him, him the unique message. And he brings that message of grace in and it, it, the Gentiles are allowed to, they can hear the message of the death, burial, and resurrection. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. And that's why it's important, it's so important to understand that Paul is an apostle. When you look in Romans chapter 11, if you'll turn with me there, Romans chapter 11. I hope I'm not going too fast. I'm, I, I, I'm concerned with time as well as everybody else, and I don't want to uh, go past time. That's one thing the military taught me. You be on time, but you do things by time. And it, it's, that's what you've got to understand. Romans chapter 11, verse 13 Paul says, For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. I mean, when you magnify something, I, I consider this a magnifying glass. I consider when I worked, I worked for M&M Mars for years, 28 years, down in Tennessee. We made candy. We'd put it under the magnifying glass and see if there's any cracks or any nicks or chips in that candy. That's how, we, how critical we were looking at it and make sure the product was right. And, you know, when you put that candy under magnifying glass, it just makes it larger. I mean, it's, boy, it's out. And that's what Paul, he said, I'm apostle of the, of the Gentiles there in verse 13. Uh, as much as I'm the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So he's magnifying his office being apostle of the Gentiles. And uh, the thing, you look at that there, he he's wants to make the Gentiles bold and he wants that ministry to be seen all over by even Jews and you read on down in verse 14 he said if it by any means I may provoke the immolation of them which are my flesh and might save some of them for if the casting away of them that's Israel be, rec- be the reconciled in the world what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead I mean Israel had fallen and God's given the ministry to Paul to go to the Gentiles but yet Paul we know that Paul not only Gentiles, but a Jew could be saved as well. He took the gospel out to the heathens, Jews and Gentiles as well, to give it out to them. And uh, you think about Gentiles. Now here the message is going to them. So the question is, what are they hearing? 
what are, what are the Gentiles believing? We're talking about the uniqueness of Paul's message. Uh, the question is to demonstrate the uniqueness of Paul's message. Well, what are the Gentiles hearing and what are they believing in the but now time period? Because things have changed. It's no longer the Jew has advantage. It's no longer time past. It's but now. It's a, it's a different message. And we read in, in Galatians 1, 11, and 12 about that, how that he got that message. Well, what are the Gentiles hearing and believing? First of all, they're hearing a, a different message by Paul. That message is completely different. Uh, Paul, he's given the capstone of all of it. He, there's been revelation about the cross and all in the Old Testament, but when it comes to Paul, he gets the capstone. He, he has the final part. And he, he, it's laid out there in Romans. We understand that Romans is a foundation book. It's a cross work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells you that what Christ did on the cross, what he accomplished on the cross for all of us. So uh, you, you, think, you think about the, the cross compared to in time past. Go back to Matthew chapter 16 for just a minute. Matthew chapter 16. You know, you look in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and how do they look at the cross? They look at it as bad news. That's how they looked at it. We look at it in the but now as good news. But back, back in time past is bad news because you look in Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 and 22. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto His disciples how that He must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders, and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. So that's bad news to Peter. And you can go on over to Acts chapter 2, and you can read that, uh, what Peter stood up to Israel, the Jews there. It was bad news. You killed him. You crucified him. But for us... We can glory in the cross. We're thankful for what the cross has done for us. Paul preached the good news, the death, burial, and resurrection, all that Christ has accomplished for us. You know, you think about your sins being forgiven. You think about saved and your sins are forgiven, they're gone. You're in Christ. You're a, you're, you're a new creature now. Turn, for example, to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And... Look, look in verses, verse 14, Colossians 1, 14. Here's an example. This is what the cross does for us. Once we're saved, we believe the cross, we believe the gospel. And in Colossians 1, 14, Paul says, "...in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins." And, you know, the sad thing is there's a lot of Christendom today, all that, they don't believe their sins are all forgiven. They're, they confess, you know, and they're praying, "...Lord, forgive me of this." I pray that you'll forgive me today of all unconfessed, all secret sins. That's the way they pray. You may have prayed that way before you came to the knowledge of the truth. And it, how peaceful it is to be able to just relax and think about what Christ has done for us, how unique the message is, and that we're saved, and all we have forgiven us. For another example, turn to Colossians 2.13. Colossians 2.13. What the Gentiles are hearing and believing... In, in the But Now program, they're hearing a different message. They're hearing a cross. They're hearing the good news that Christ died on that cross for their sins, that your sins are forgiven. And you look in Colossians 2, verse 13, Paul says, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now that's something to see. And, and understand that. That's how different it is. The Gentiles, here they are. They're, they're, they've got a new message. We've got a new message. We're not in time past. We're not under the law. We're not keeping the commandments and all that. But we've got the message of grace today. And that, that's another thing, why it's so unique as far as... Uh, it's one particular thing. Uh, the demonstrate, we're trying to demonstrate the uniqueness of Paul's message. It's one particular thing. It's the mystery program. Nobody knew it in time past. Nobody knew about the body of Christ. I went to a school in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Tennessee Temple years ago, and preachers would come in, and one particular preacher would come in, and he tried to start the mystery program all the way back in Genesis. And you know that doesn't work that way. 
<laughs> and but that's that's what you have to deal with. And somebody's going to believe that. That's a sad thing. You'll have somebody that's going to believe that it did, and that's not true. That that's false. But you you think about how unique we the Gentiles. We've got a different message. It's unique. And the fact it's a different message about the cross, completely what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross. Also, grace and peace. You know, we, we talk about and we read grace and peace. Here's an example. Turn to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Am I going too fast? Romans chapter 1. I've had a tendency sometimes to go too fast, and that, that that's not good. Romans chapter 1 and verse 7, we're talking about... Uh, we're trying to demonstrate the uniqueness of Paul's message. We're saying it's one particular thing. It's the mystery program, the body of Christ. It's a, in the but now time period, and the message is different about the cross. The message is different about grace and peace. In Romans 1 and verse 7, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, that's, that's the attitude that our Heavenly Father and God the Son has today towards us. It's grace and peace. It's not wrath. It's not judgment. It's not we're going to face the tribulation period because we're not. We're saved from any wrath to come. When the Lord saved us, uh, we're raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places, but we're not worried about the wrath and the judgment because that's not us. That'll be in the prophecy program. That's, that's Israel. But you think about us, it's grace and peace, and we're going to talk about grace. So uh, how unique that is. And Paul demonstrates that in his message. That's, that's what the Gentiles heard when Paul started out, grace and peace. That's what we hear today through a complete Bible. Romans through Philemon, to us, we hear grace and peace uh, through the Apostle Paul in his writings. He's got a, not only a, 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 different pro, a different message, but you think about a different program. A different program, and it's the it's body of Christ. Uh, we've mentioned that, but go back to Ephesians chapter 2. I'd like to read verses 13 through 15. We read one verse, but Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 13 through 15. There's a different program. You know, you think about one particular thing. You think about the mystery program. That was... It was, a, it, was, it was hid from the foundation of the world, revealed through the Apostle Paul. You think about the, the different program as far as the body of Christ. In verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes are far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. He said in verse 14, For he, that's Christ, is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle of the wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to making himself a twain one new man. I can't, I can't read with these new glasses. Verse 15, one new man so making peace. You, you think about the one new man. And here's, a, here's another verse to go with that. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4 there in verse 4. Ephesians 4, 4. Paul says there's one body and one spirit even as you're called and one hope of your calling. Now, that, that's a different program. We've got one, one body. You think about there's one body. That's the body of Christ that we're reading about in Ephesians 2 over there that I read to you. One man. We are the body of Christ. In time past, they didn't have the body of Christ. Uh, Israel had their program. They're earthly people. Uh, the body of Christ is heavenly. And that's how, why it's so unique and, and different uh, as far as that goes. You think about the body of Christ. What's God doing today? Many people ask this question. What's God doing today? Well, He's forming the body of Christ. Well, how's He doing that? He's doing it through believers with uh, doing the work of the ministry. That's how He's forming the body of Christ. And w with that, you think about uh, assemblies and people say, well, how many, how many saints do you have in your assembly? It doesn't matter how many you have. We're doing the work of the ministry. And... With that, you know, we may be out in the country down in Tennessee, and we are, and, but I'm going to tell you something about us. We're well known down there, and we're going to be more as time goes on because we're trying to get the gospel out. We've got folks now that are involved in the work of the ministry, 
and they're in the school as well, and there's work being done, and we're not dead. And I, I remember one time when I graduated from Tennessee Temple, and I, this has always stuck with me, Jack Howes spoke our graduation. And I know you've heard Jack Howes. Jack Howes said, you can be knocked down, but you're not knocked out. So thank the Lord you get up and you walk. And that's what we all have to do. You may get knocked down and go through things because we stand for the grace. We've got the message, but you're not knocked out. Get up and walk and stand. Act like men. Act like adults. Act like who we are in Christ and walk worthy of that vocation uh, wherewith we're called there. So you think about one body. I mean, how unique that was. A message that Paul preached. He preached at the one body there. And he's talking about the body. It's grace now, not law. We're not under the law. We're under grace. And also, it's, it's uh, unity, not division. Verse 3 there, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. you got unity, not division. There's no wall up today for us. Uh, we're, we don't... It, it, anybody can be saved by believing the gospel. And also, the mystery, it's not prophecy. The prophecy has been interrupted. We're the mystery program. And you can go to Ephesians chapter 3 there, verse 1, Paul says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God given to me, uh, grace of God which is given to me to you, how that by revelation He made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a four and few words. We've got the mystery program. And that's given to us through the Apostle Paul. And not only that, but Paul's message was unique. It's, it's, it was about, as far as one particular thing, is about the mystery, the body of Christ, and all. And another thing, it was unrestricted. He is an unrestricted apostle. He wasn't limited to just go to Jerusalem like Peter and the others were in different locations, but he was unrestricted. He could go. And that's why in 1 Timothy chapter 2, this verse means a lot to me, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. We had this at uh, one of our Bible conferences. And, you know, it's something. When you usually you have a theme verse, that theme verse usually stays with you. Have you ever noticed that? When you, like here, you'll, a lot of us participate in this conference, the theme verse will stay with us. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, Paul says, "...who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth." Uh, you know, all men. There's no distinction between the two. And his apostleship there. You think about Paul's message, how unique it was. It was unique. Why was it unique? Because this is something you need to hear. It was not found in the Gospels, Paul's message. He, there's nobody in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, had what Paul preached, Paul's message. It was unique that way. And even though there's a lot of people, a lot of brethren, they try to mix it over there and they try to find ways to f figure out that hey it was over there in the old testament it was in the gospel no it wasn't it's the bible s says what it says it means what it means and what we need to do is believe what it says and galatians 1 11 and 12 going back over there and you look at that and read that verse again go back over there and we'll read it galatians chapter 1 verses 11 and 12 Paul says there, he says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. I mean, it's that simple. We'll look at that in a few minutes as well. But you think about Paul's unique ministry. It was a, the mystery program. But also, it was about one particular place. And I'm talking about the but now. I know ages come, other things. But one particular place is heavenly. I mean, it's heavenly. It's not earthly. All of us know that. Uh, look in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. The heavenly part. We're not earthly. And the sad thing is, a lot of folks, they want to act like, hey, I'm going to follow Jesus and His earthly ministry. And they want to be earthly. I don't want to be earthly. I want to go up. I want to, I'm waiting and, you know, I... I I, I was li uh, listening and I did a, a study on looking and listening and waiting and pressing. That's what I used a few weeks ago. And I'm just, I'm listening. What am I listening for? I'm listening for the shout. When the Lord comes and when He shouts, we're going up. And that's what I'm listening for. And I'm just waiting and I'm working. I'm, I'm pressing on. And whatever it takes, I told Charlotte a while ago, 
you go through things with this old flesh, and it's okay. I, 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 go, I have my share as well, but as long as I'm able to stand and, and tell folks the good news, I'm going to tell them that what Christ has done for them and what they can have in Christ Jesus, that we're heavenly people. Ephesians chapter 1 there in verse 3, Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're in Christ, or in Christ. Uh, you know, if you're saved, you're in Christ. And we've, we've been blessed with all, with all these spiritual blessings. And, uh, you know, I've learned something by, by reading, reading the Bible and studying and uh, learning more. You look in Ephesians 1, 3 and hold your place there and turn to Romans eight thirty two. Romans eight thirty two. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans eight thirty two. I mean, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings, Ephesians 1, 3. All right, in Romans 8, 32, Paul says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? We've got all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. What a blessing that is to know that. You know, and that goes right along. And what do you find in, in Colossians chapter 2 there in verse 10? We might as well read that verse. It goes right along with it. Colossians chapter 2. And verse 10, talking about the spiritual blessing, heavenly places and all. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10, Paul says this. He says, and you are complete in Him, which is head of all principality and power. You're complete in Him. You know, back in 1970, I was saved in, in Germany. I was saved in, in Kaiserslautern, Germany. I was in an Air Force base at Simbach, right outside of Kaiserslautern. But I was saved there. And little did I know, I, I didn't know anything, uh, but I heard the gospel and I was saved. Well, they wanted to baptize me like I wasn't complete. Well, I didn't know any better. So they baptized me. Then I, that was one denomination. Then a year later, I left that uh, denomination, charismatic groups, what it was. And I left and went to Independent Baptist, and they wouldn't have me unless I got baptized. So... <laughs> And you know, the sad thing is, what's funny, I'm afraid of water. <laughs> I didn't want to be baptized to start with. But you know why I'm afraid of water? Can't swim. Well, why can't you swim? That leads to another question. See, I used to audit. I know about these questions sometimes. But why can't I swim? Well, I had to work. Well, what would you do? Well, I farmed. I worked on a farm all my life. What? till I got out and went into the military. That's what I did. I was down in Tennessee, in the hills of Tennessee, and we worked. And I'm telling you, we worked. I know what plowing with a mule is. Anybody ever plow with a mule here? I know what it is. I know about going up one side of the road and down the other. I know about hoeing tobacco, uh, the gardens and all. My family, they wouldn't just raise a little garden. They'd put out an acre. And not all that, but they'd have one in the fall. And I always just hated to have to do all that. What would they do with all that? They gave it away. They didn't sell it. People back then didn't sell stuff. They gave it to everybody else. And you know, things have changed over the years. But you think about the heavenly places. I mean, we're complete in Him. We don't, we don't need anything else. We just need the Word of God. And we need to learn who we are in Christ. Build that house of doctrine in, in our inner man. We've got the foundation as Romans. That's your cross work of Christ. Build that house up in Ephesians. You learn... You're heavenly people, and that's what I'm telling you right now. That's why Paul's message was so unique, that we are heavenly. And one, another thing about Paul, the message was uh, unique. He, he preached about one particular person, the Lord Jesus Christ, and it was through him. The Lord Jesus Christ gave him that ministry by revelation. That's why we read that in Galatians chapter 1, verses, Galatians 1, 11, and 12. So what I want to do now, I want to clarify with the time that I have left, Exactly the contents of the gospel of our salvation. What's the, what's in the contents of that? Well, when you clarify, you try to you make it clear, and the Bible makes it clear. There's no there's no uh, darkness about it or haze over it at all. It's it's clear about salvation, uh, what it is and what it's not, and, and that's what I'll deal with first, just briefly. What what's it not? What is the contents of the gospel? What it's not, turn to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And look in verse 23. Matthew four twenty-three. 
Every time I eat a tomato, I appreciate folks that raise those tomatoes. That's hard work. And really. Every time I eat green beans, I hate to pick green beans. That's hard work. You have to get down there on your knees and bend over. And if you're like me, if you get down on your knees, you may not be able to get up. It's hard work. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, what the, the contents of the gospel, what it's not. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Well, we know what it's not. It's not the gospel of the kingdom. And you think about the good news about establishing of God's kingdom on this earth. It's not about that. We're heavenly people. And Paul makes that clear in the book of Ephesians there. Now also go, uh, go with me uh, to Matthew chapter 10 there in verse 7. Matthew 10, 7. And he says, the Bible says, Matthew 10, 7, and, and the Lord said, And as ye go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is, is at hand. Well, what does the kingdom of heaven mean? Well, look and back, go back to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 2. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 2. Talking about John the Baptist in verse 1. Matthew 3, 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You think about the kingdom of heaven. Is the kingdom that God of the heaven will one day establish on this earth. That's, it's not, that's not what we're preaching today. But yet, we have people, the opposition that we face today, and we deal with day in and day out. They want to argue with you that there's a gospel over there in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's not our gospel. And we, all, we know that today by reading the Word of God. Well, what is the gospel? Well, Paul tells you, going back to Galatians chapter 1 and verse 11 there, he tells us something. And, you know, I appreciate what Brother John said last night about the Word of God. It's true. It's, there's no error in it. The King James Bible is the Word of God. And I, I, we stand on that. Uh, Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. Well, what is it? Talking about the contents of the gospel. Paul says in verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which preached of me is not after man. Well, you look at that word certify there. That's to, to officially say, hey, it's true what I'm telling you. It's true. It's correct. It's genuine. And that goes right along with John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. I mean, the word of God is true. And what Paul wrote down and it's given to us is true. It is the Word of God. But what is it? Well, we know one thing, first of all, about what the contents of the gospel, it's not after man. And you look at that there in verse, uh, verse 12 there. For I neither, verse 12, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. The contents of the gospel that Paul has, that we've got, is not after man. Paul didn't get it from any man. And Paul makes that clear there. And also, if you look at verse 12 and compare that with verse 1, this will help you. Paul says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. I mean, Paul was called to be an apostle. And he said there, neither, but not of men, neither by man. So his apostleship, he wasn't called by man. Uh, the gospel that he got... Uh, Received, he didn't get it from any man. No man preached it but prior to him or taught him in any way. So that's, you look at that as far as it's not after man. Well, the thing is, how did Paul get it? And we read it there in verse 12. In Galatians 1 12, how did Paul get it? For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's how he got it. The revelation of Jesus Christ, the Lord gave it to him. It didn't say from him, it says by him. And when you, you read that there, by the revelation of Jesus Christ there, that, that's how he got it. You'll find Galatians chapters 1 and 2 there, Paul's giving, him, giving proof of his apostleship. He's having to defend that. And you know, he had opposition wherever he went. All of us know that. And Paul said it's not after man. No man gave it to Paul. And I'll share this verse with you. Turn to Acts chapter 20 and look at verse 24. Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. 
In verse 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now, the gospel of the grace of God, you think about that, that the contents of the gospel of the grace of God. Paul is that due time testifier. He, he gives you that over there in First Timothy. So what is the gospel? We're leading up to that now. How did Paul get it? He got it by revelation. What is the gospel? And we always have to go to 1 Corinthians 15. It's, that's a good place to go. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15, and we'll read verses 3 and 4. People are a lot of times questioning, they'll say, well, Paul wasn't saved the same way you were. Well, if you'll read 1 Corinthians 15, 3, Paul says, For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, how was Paul saved? He received the death, burial, and resurrection himself. And you, two things in this verse, 15, 3 there, one is how that Christ died for our sins. And the second one was, it was according to the Scriptures. That means it all right there. Christ died for our sins. And how do we know it? Well, it was according to the script. it's according to the Scriptures. And thy word's truth. We've got the Scriptures in front of us today. And we know that Christ died for our sins. And you think about 1 Corinthians 15, and go to Romans chapter 4 and verse 25. Compare that with that. Romans 4, 25. Romans 4.25, Paul says, Who was delivered for our offenses. Well, notice that. Who was delivered for our offenses, there's the cross, for our sins, and was raised, that's His resurrection again, for our justification. Now, that's another good verse to go right along with 1 Corinthians 15.3, that Christ died for our sins, for our justification. He died for our sins, that we can be saved, that we can believe the gospel, that we can receive the righteousness of God. That we don't, we don't have ourselves. It's all through the Lord Jesus Christ and His shed blood on the cross of Calvary. So, what is the gospel? It's the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that died, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. That's the gospel. And what's grace? Well, you think about grace, the grace message. Turn to Romans chapter 3 and verse 24. You've got the gospel of grace is what Paul preached. What is grace? Uh, Romans chapter 3 and verse 24, Paul says, "...being justified freely by His grace through the redemption is in Christ Jesus." Notice that being justified freely. It's free. Uh, how? By His grace. What, what is grace? Well, it's unmerited favor that God uh, de delights in giving without any work on our part. There's nothing we can do on our part to get, to get it. It's, it's all grace. It's a gift to you. And also, it's all that God has free to do for us because of what Christ accomplished at Calvary. You can't forget that, and you can't leave that out, what Christ did for us on the cross. You know, it's a free gift. Uh, I, I mentioned that to you there in Romans 3.24 or 3.24 there, being justified freely by His grace. It's grace, what God's free to do for us. He, we're justified freely by His grace. The, it's the idea of a gift. It's the idea of being justified as a gift. God is justifying us freely. In other words, God says, I did it all. All you can do is believe it. That's all we can do. That's what salvation is. Well, if we believe that for, to save our souls, and it does, well, we can believe the rest of the Bible to live by it. If you're saved by grace, we ought to live by grace and, and, and serve the Lord that way. You think about the freely, and it's not by works. A lot of folks want to add things to it. And it, turn to Ephesians chapter 2. You know these verses. Ephesians chapter 2, it's not by works. It's grace. It's a free gift. Rome, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace you save through faith, and that not yourselves is the gift of God. That's salvation. It's a gift. It's a free gift. You're justified freely. You're declared righteous because of the blood of Christ shedding His blood on the cross, that we can have everlasting life. You know, we don't work to get saved. We don't work to stay saved, like a lot of Christendom teaches. And we don't, we don't work to prove that we are saved either. You know, I've learned this. 
I don't care who you are, you're never going to do anything or have any motivation about you unless you learn that the doctrine and build that house of doctrine up in your soul and be grace motivated. That'll motivate you. That'll energize you. Why do you think I'm here today? As, as old as I am and things you go through and all, I wouldn't trade what I've got today for anything else. I want to preach and teach. I may not be the best, and I'm not saying I am, but I, I am going to stand for the truth, the Word of God. And that, that's the most important thing for all of us. And you know, salvation, it's, it's not by works. You believe. You believe the gospel. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. The moment you believe that, that's the moment you're saved and you have everlasting life. You know, are you willing to do that? Turn to if Romans chapter 4 and verse 22 before we close. Romans 4, 22. Romans chapter 4 and verse 22. Paul says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, you know, the faith of Jesus Christ, that's His trustworthiness. That's what Christ has done. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. There's no works involved. That's salvation. You're saved by grace. Grace is a gift to you. You're justified freely. You're, you're, you're saved and you have everlasting life. And you know, the sad thing is, a lot of folks, they want to work, they want to try to do, and... What you need to do, you need to settle back, settle down and just relax and read and believe what you read in Romans through Philemon, rightly divide the Word, follow the Apostle Paul and build that house of doctrine and let grace work through you, manifest Christ in your life. Uh, you think about the gospel that isn't in the gospels. You don't find the gospel of grace, the death, burial, and resurrection in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You don't find it in Hebrews through Revelation but you do find it in Romans through Philemon. You don't find the unique, about the uniqueness of Paul's ministry and the message, and all, we're heavenly people. Israel's earthly. You, you think about uh, what we have in Christ and what we're looking forward to. We're going to get a, receive a glorified body. And like I said, I'm waiting. I'm listening. I'm listening for that shout. And it could be today. And we're going to go up to glory with the Lord. You know, to clarify exactly the contents of the gospel of our salvation, it's clear it's by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. And I pray, Lord, that the message, Lord, will be a benefit to others. I pray that, uh, that for the other brethren to follow, Lord, that everything will be said and done will bring honor and glory to your name. And we thank you for grace. We thank you for the gospel of salvation. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to be.